Hello everyone and welcome to another live broadcast from the studios in the Big E campus. Uh, my name is Greg O'Hanlon and I am the course director for the Music, Sound and Technology program. I hope you're all well and joining me today as usual is John and John is over in Studio One. Hey John. Hi Greg, thanks. Hi everyone, you morning. You all set? I'm all set. Okay. Ready when you are. <laughs> I'm going to do my little bit and then we'll see you in uh, just a few moments. Okay, perfect. Okay, so let's go over to the presentation. And what is this all about? Well, as mentioned, we're going today to be talking about the Music, Sound and Technology program based here in the McGee campus. And you can see our strap line there, creativity made audible. And that's really all that we're about here, taking your creative ideas, whatever they may be, whatever genre, or if it's music, or even if it's not music related, it could be some sound element, but taking all of these things that have an application in the domain of sound and then trying to make them real for you. So we use terms like um, thinking about modern or contemporary listening experiences. So essentially thinking about how audio is audio and music is experienced today. Okay. And today I'll be doing the, 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 the course kinds of things and then we'll run some demonstrations in a little bit. But the bones of today are why study? music, sound, technology at Ulster, the kinds of things that you're going to learn with us, how we work with you, how we support you, and then we'll hear some student feedback. And yes, of course, we should keep an eye on careers as well, which we will do. So we are based on the McGee campus, which is Northern Ireland's second city. It has a vibrant life, nightlife and a cultural life. There are numerous cultural institutions, event or venues, gay and uh, festivals that take place in the city and uh, lots and lots of music. The city has a long heritage of producing lots and lots of music uh, for many, many years in all, in all genres and of all flavors. When we talk about why study um, MST at Ulster, uh, sorry, I'm going to call it, I'm going to refer to MST because music, sound, technology, that's a lot of syllables, all right? So we'll shorten that down, jump, and we'll just go to MST. Um, so we'll, we'll explore facilities in a minute, but let's look at the other two briefly. Uh, how the, the main, one of the main reasons to come to us is the unparalleled, and I say that with some degree of confidence. Uh, teaching support that we provide. We come out again and again um, at the top of tables in terms of teaching support and the, the, the types of, uh, well, the way we run our classes essentially and the way we run our, our support structures, which is all very focused on student experience and helping you to get the most from your time with us. Everybody on the program or who teaches on the program is either or yeah is either in currently engaged in the industrial environment or has been or continues to consult in in addition to being a, an academic educator or a researcher so we're all keenly aware of what the outside picture is what the creative industries are like how they're evolving and they do evolve rather quickly and we keep an eye on that and the program mirrors that. We change the program uh, to reflect how things are changing. And I should, I should mention this now, we're coming up to our third birthday at the end of this year. So we're still a relatively new program, but we already have numerous updates um, in the planning stages. It's all good. It's all much more focused on. Um, how we can evolve the modules to essentially answer the uh, needs and goals of our students. Uh, so nothing too drastic, but uh, we will be focusing much more on things like music production and sound design. That's, that, that's, that's the bulk of the changes. 
And then we have some really, really good facilities. We've been investing in the studios for many years, but in particular over the last two, two years. So we'll show you some of them now in a moment and, and we'll talk about that. But all our, all our facilities are available to you. Well, all minus one are available to you from the day you join us. And we encourage all our young people to explore the facilities and start to use them as soon as possible. So a lot of our classes will, for example, take place in laboratory environments where you have a computer and you're working on it. But then there's also the studio facilities and there's lots of equipment that we provide on loan that you can go out and run whatever it is that, that, that you're interested in doing. So what's the course about? There's three main parts to it. The obvious one would be the composition side of things. And I know you can see that there's the term digital is stuck on the front of it. That's fairly meaningless, but it does try to allude to the fact that we do use computers quite a lot. And that's just the way it goes these days. So there's a lot to do with using uh, industry standard tools to put together, to sequence, to construct uh, audio material. Some of that will be musical and some of it can be uh, more in the, the domain of sound design. So you're trying to create a, a listening experience that maybe sounds like something else in the real world, or it could be more avant-garde. So you could be trying experimental things. We also have a strong technology layer in the program. As you'll soon see, we use a lot of tools to both produce, edit and shape sound, and then to do other things with the sound after that. Uh, so we're, we're, we're quite where we're quite embedded in, in the technology space. And I guess that's reflected in the program being a Bachelor of Science. That's what you'll come out with, it's a BSc. Uh, so that reflects the, the level of technological stuff, let's call it that that, that, that we're involved with. And it's not just taking things that are uh, just taking off the shelf solutions. It's also about going behind some of these tools and tweaking them to your own means or ends. And then a term that's somewhat ambiguous, we talk about the performance. And that can mean that uh, you're interested in essentially where, well, you're interested in the performative aspect as in playing an instrument or playing as part of a, some sort of ensemble, whether that be a three piece or four piece band or, or whatever type of music you're interested in doing. So it could be where that music ultimately is going to be performed. But performance actually means a lot more than that. We think of performance in terms of actually where music is played. So it could be just a playback system. So that could be any venue or a club or a venue. And or then we also do a lot of work around sound design and immersive audio where we're thinking about sound for film, picture, TV, and then increasingly games, which is a, a really, really interesting area. Games, if you weren't aware, games are now bigger than both music and film combined. So it's a huge area and it's just growing at a phenomenal pace. It's about growing about five times faster th than all other areas. And really what's driving this is that games is almost the ultimate convergence of media forms. You have essentially the moving image, text and all of that, the story and all the usual components, but then we have really, really strong audio layers and the interactive bit. Um, but then we also think about uh, playback in places like galleries and museums. And uh, yeah, th there's lots to be done there where we're thinking more about the ambient sound field. So where sound behaves in a, in, in a space where people are moving through on a much more fluid basis. So essentially thinking about what their auditory experience is. So, there are the three main parts, the essentially putting things together, shaping it with tools, and then thinking about the last piece then, which is ultimately, where is it going to be performed or played? Let's put it that way. So now let's take a look at what we're doing in the studios and we're going to go back over to John, who's going to talk you through uh, a demonstration of Studio One. How are you, John? I I'm good, Greg. Thanks. Hey, everyone. 
and welcome. Um, so as Greg mentioned, my name's John. Um, I'm a learning technologist here at the school, um, but I'm also one of the core tutors on the MST program. So I'm joining you today from one of the spaces that Greg mentioned a moment ago, which is uh, Studio One. I'm just going to move backwards here a second so the equipment behind me comes into focus. So hopefully you can see there the main desk, which is really the heart of this particular space. Um, so what I, want, what, what I would like to do in this section is really just give you a broad overview of the types of equipment that we run here but, and a, a sort of virtual tour, let's say. And then we'll speak a little bit about the context in which you'd um, encounter this particular space. Before we get into that, though, what I would, I would say is you know, this is very much a student area, as are, as are all the studios. Yes, we do use these spaces for a certain amount of teaching, but largely during, during the average week, these spaces are here for students to come in to work on assessment-based projects, but also utilize these spaces for their own projects as well. And I think that's a really important point to raise. Um, so the desk that we run here in a bit more focus then is um, analog. It's a very modern desk, this, and has, has some really unique and interesting features and a great sound um, from Audient. Now, something like this can seem really overwhelming to newcomers, but just to give you a little bit of context, within two sessions of tutorial, content in uh in the module in which you'll first encounter this desk you'll have enough capability to come in here and actually utilize this space in real projects and of course then we build upon that knowledge in future weeks both in the in the theoretical aspects but also very much in the practical aspects as well so just looking at this from another angle then you can see sort of in the background there the recording system on screen. So essentially the way that this space works is it really is a marriage between what we feel is, are the best technologies to perform a particular task. Um, so in some cases it will be completely analog hardware, um, but we'll also combine those with some of the best digital tools as well. So I think that's a particularly um, interesting and important aspect because of course this is mirrored in industry as well. So just to have a little look then at some of the other additional support and equipment that we have in this space. Um, at the left hand side here, we, you can see what we refer to as a, a rack, which is just external hardware processors. So things like EQs, compressors, um, but also in that same area, we make the physical connections between the various different parts of the studio itself. So at the moment, we're looking at the control room area. And just behind me and just um, through the window that you can sort of see at the top of this image is the main performance area, which would be the area where your performers will reside as you're recording them. And these two spaces are, of course, kind of isolated from one another. So on, on the right hand side, then we have this kind of summed up really well, this marriage between digital and analog. So at the top of this rack here, we can see two. Um, analog processors, one EQ and another device, which is referred to as a compressor. And just below that, then we have the actual train station of the studio. If we think of it that way, the, the means by which we get all of these sounds into our computer, which is our um, analog to digital converter. And then of course you can see the, the computing system in there as well. So we're really marrying like these analog tools and with you know, highly specified digital tools. And I think that's, that's a really flexible way of working. So we'll have a little look then at the, the, the rest, the remainder of the studio itself. So as you enter, enter this space, you'll see you start to enter this kind of performance area, which is just to the right of where I'm sitting at the moment. The control room is just to the left of this particular graphic. Um, at the right hand side of that same area, you can see we have um, so you can see some of the the equipment that we use in terms of instrumentation, but you can also see the the vocal booth that we have at the rear there. Um, and this space, like many of the spaces that we have, can be configured in various different ways. So the those wooden panels that you see at the back there can be moved around and provide some form of acoustic shielding 
for different tasks. So say for instance, may, maybe you're recording a vocal, it might be set up as you see here, um, but it also could be configured for some isolation from drum performances or guitar performances, for example. So uh, really flexible spaces with, you know, a lot of equipment that it resides in house and it, it stays within this space. But as Greg had mentioned, we have a lot of kind of equipment that we'd classify as floating that can be loaned from um, centrally or from other studio spaces. The, the facilities tend to change in terms of what equipment is in there at any one particular time. So also within this space, then we have um, a set of you know, really highly specified microphone uh, systems. Obviously, that's really key to what we do in here. Um, and many of these do do stay here. So um, I think what's important to mention here is that sort of aligned to what I said earlier about these being student spaces is it's very much student managed as well. So we we get involved very little in terms of how the spaces operate day to day. It's really up to, you know, our young people to book their own sessions, come and go as they please, and just use, utilize the equipment that's, that's here for them. Um, and in addition to that, we have, you know, various different instruments and amplifiers um, to support that type, of, um, that type of work. So what I would like to do then at this stage is just play a short demo of um, an example piece that was recorded and produced in this space by our sec a second year group this time last year. And this is an original work by one of our students as well in terms of the arrangement of this song. So I'm just gonna start that up. Haven't washed these jeans in weeks It reeks, but I don't care Still need somebody to cut my hair But I'm too broke I don't smoke, but I drink And some think that it's too much At least I'm always coming in clutch And that's no lie Here's why Living easy today I don't give a shit about the pay Don't stay in the cold Cause we got time to worry when we're old Okay, so hopefully that gives you at least some idea of the types of work that happens here. In terms of the actual module content itself, then you will you'll be exposed to the majority of that in the early part of your second year here. So um, when Greg mentioned this, this, two of the spaces are available to you from first year. That sort of relates to the other two studios that we run. Essentially, that's necessary because, as you can see, it's sort of a complex space to um, to begin with, at least, um, and it requires quite a bit of tuition to get to that point. But as I've said, you know, something like this desk may seem really overwhelming to begin with, but when we break it down to, into short sections within a couple of tutorial sessions, you'll be up and running and hopefully utilizing the space regularly. So I think that's it for me for now, Greg. Great stuff. Thanks, John. Okay, thanks. Hey, folks. So back to me, and I'm in the other studio, which we refer to as Studio 2. Uh, it has many of the same features that you've just seen in Studio 1, but it has a slightly different focus, let's put it that way. So behind me, you can see two speakers here, but there's actually an array of those going around this room in a circle just around me. So this space is a lot more to do with sound design and thinking about sound dispersion in space, okay? 
Now we have lots more loudspeakers around uh, that, we, that we can augment and, and, and do all kinds of interesting things with. But this space by default is configured with that big circle and there's a subwoofer over here to my left. And you can see behind me, there's a, a, just a, a selection of some of the equipment that we use. And I'm going to now try and move towards that carefully. Bear with me folks, because I have to move a lot of cables as I go. And I may turn my back to you, so apologies if I do. And I'll start, no, let's go this way. I'll start over here. Um, with this unit, which is a Moog Matriarch, and it really is an extraordinarily powerful synthesizer, and it does things like... So believe it or not, that's a lot of what sound design is, just coming up with interesting parts that we can use in various different applications, sometimes musical and sometimes not. Up here then we have an MS-1, which is, well, it's just a great little synthesizer for doing funny things like this. Lots of fun with that. And then over here, yeah. uh, over here we have a Eurorack modular synthesizer, which is, I guess, a, a lot like the, the sound producing parts of that one minus the keyboard, um, but with a lot more detail. And you can do phenomenal things with these types of things. And it's a great way to learn what we refer to as signal processing, all about how we process audio. If you can understand this, you'll understand pretty much uh, most of the, if not all, the audio processing that you'll come across on a regular basis. So that's producing the sounds. And then this is the trigger. So we're doing things like this. So we can do that. And then over here, what we can do is we can add a drum machine. And do something like. So that's those. And then I mentioned this drum machine. It also has a sampler on board. The sampler is probably one of my favorite pieces of equipment because you can do things like, here's a kick drum and you can really manipulate how it plays. So we can do things like, well, we can pitch it up and down. I bring that back to normal. And then I'm going to get it to do that. Do that. There we go. And then we can do... Anyway, elements of sound design. And then all of this has been brought over to a system just over here on the left. We have Ableton Live. Everything you're hearing from me is coming from Ableton Live. I'm sure some of you know what that is. We have a mixer. And then John has recently installed loads of really, really great racking 
audio hardware ins and outs and ways to route uh, signals between different places so loads and loads of fun in here and that's studio two the other studio we have uh, we, we've just put together this year studio three there's a pattern here <laughs> Uh, Studio 3 is all about uh, post-production. Um, post-production is one of these terms that means so many things to so many different people. Ultimately, it's about what happens to productions post, uh, post once you've put it all together. So things polish, lots of polish, but it, it can also, believe it or not, mean things like putting together uh, dialogue and vocals for advertising and cleaning them up, tidying them up. Um, that's actually, there's a little bit more to that than most people realize. Um, so a lot of that kind of thing. So it's really microscopic fixing and polishing. Right then, let's go back to the presentation and see where we ended up. And we are here, the modules. So I could list every module and it would be just not all that helpful to be honest so instead i've tried to categorize our main topics of discussion in each of the years first year for us is very much fundamentals we spend a lot of time working on music production uh, a lot of the stuff that we've just talked about here sampling sequencing synthesis but then one of the changes that's coming in we're also going to start to introduce recording um, in the first year very very soon so you'll get be able to get a start on some of the work that you saw uh, that John was doing uh, just a moment ago uh, designing sound follows on that a little bit that's definitely much more sound design so thinking about how we strip sounds apart and then rebuild them up thinking about how sounds are made how they're constituted uh, which is actually really really fascinating and qu quite valuable in terms of uh, creative potential and how you can shape things and make original things. We'll also introduce you to elements of programming and electronics, but we do this in a really fun way uh, in second semester of first year, for example, again with John, you'll explore things like building your own interfaces for either something like a mixer or a new instrument. Uh, so there's lots of ways that you can do that by really developing bespoke applications. Bespoke simply means new, completely tailored to you. So many of our students are musicians already and they'll be looking to essentially augment their instrument or their performance or thinking about new things that they can add to the work that they do. And of course, this is a university program, so we need to understand some of the history. And when we talk about history, we're talking about great artists, great movements, genres, down through history. Because you do, it is helpful as a, as a creative individual to understand what's gone before. Uh, and it can help you frame what you're doing. But again, it's all based on who did this and who did this and what was interesting about it and what can we learn from that and maybe even get inspired by it. Into second year, as well, we've mentioned it numerous times now, it's the big module with John in the studio. And then you'll do uh, some immersive audio with me. We work with the game design program at Belfast and they, well, we're actually doing it right now. They have 10 projects, so large project teams developing complete games, 10 of them. And we do all of the sound and the music for it. So we'll work with those teams very closely developing original music and original sound for it. Sometimes the sounds are electronic, like you saw me doing here, and you can certainly imagine, it's not too difficult to imagine how much of that would apply to a game environment. But then we also actually really do focus on trying to capture real sounds. So things like footsteps, doorways creaking, um, lots of percussive type sounds, so punches and that kind of thing, and actually even weapons. And believe it or not, the year before last, we had a student who actually completed a project recording real firearms, shotguns and rifles that were ultimately used in a game. So really, really interesting stuff. Uh, collaboration throughout all of that is a, is a big component. Working in music is just a, a supremely collaborative area. You're always working with somebody, whether it be another musician or a producer or an engineer of some sort. Um, and 
like I said, other musicians and collaboration is a huge part in this program. And similarly, when we're working with the game designers and the animators and our film, our, our colleagues in, in the film course as well, um, you'll be working with students who are working in another domain, but one that requires audio and music material. We'll also look at acoustics and cognition. Acoustics, how sounds in the space, and then cognition is how we perceive it. And then we'll help you to develop ideas. So, well, this comes down to a very simple rubric. Make lots of ideas, or have lots of ideas, try to develop as many as possible, and then figure out which ones are best. In the third year, there's the option to uh, take a placement. So that can take two forms. You can either go and study abroad, or you can take an industrial placement where we find you, we try to help you find a role in um, an area that's related to what we're doing. And then you can uh, work with them for the bones of a year and develop your professional practice. And it's really, really good for people who want to just get a taste of what industry is like. And it, we find it's a great confidence builder because you'll get a sense of, well, Actually, yes, I can do these things, and here's where they have value. Into the final year then, this is much where we take all of that really, and then really start to give you options for the pathway that you would like to take. So it's music for film, very popular module. Then we have a couple of options around advanced audio production, some related to the studio, and then some related to what I mentioned earlier, post-production. So in the post-production aspect, it's a lot to do with thinking about how we marry audio with particular forms of visual media, for example, advertising. Uh, we also will help you to encourage you to explore your entrepreneurial skills. We have a lot of young people who are interested in developing their own ventures, developing their own companies, their own studios, their own production companies and we'll help you and encourage you to look at what's involved there. And then lastly is the final project, which is essentially your big, op your opus, right? Whatever thing you want to leave here with, your standout project, that's what we'll help you produce. So that could be a recording, uh, well, not just one recording, it'll be a number of recordings. It could be a sound design project, it could be a game, uh, sound for a, for a game uh, type project, Really, it's completely up to you. So me trying to specify examples is not particularly helpful because ultimately it's, it's down to your ideas. So how do we work? Typically, we have about three modules per week and that amounts to about 12 to 16 hours class time with staff. So, well, that's 12 to 16 contact hours with staff. And as I mentioned earlier, that is relatively high for the area. And that doesn't include studio time. Uh, so that's just with us and uh, working on materials. As a full-time course, it's about 35 to 40 hours per week. So that's pretty much uh, standard. And we are a practice focused course. What does that mean, Greg? It means that everything that we talk about, we ultimately try to apply it. It's, it's always nice to know things, but it's much better to be able to know how to, how to apply them and how to utilize them. So we have to go from the knowing part to the doing part. And this to, to enable that, we sometimes break classes up into a theoretical component and then a practical component. Um, just so we can talk about, the, well, this is what this is about. And then we'll figure out how to apply it and how you can manipulate it and, and essentially shape it to, to whatever your particular interests are. Active learning is, I mean, this is what I just described, is active learning. It's, it's a central part of our teaching philosophy. It's not simply sitting in a room and talking about stuff. We help you to apply it. And even while we are in a room talking about it, we're actively engaged in it. So whether that be um, real-time sort of listening exercises where we then talk about it, or we'll collaborate in creating something and then everyone will all try it and then we'll talk about how that worked and where we struggled. So it's very much engaged in the learning. As I mentioned, training in the studio facilities begins in year one. With these new changes to the program, recording will start in year one. 
um, and the, the only facility that just takes a little bit longer to get into is Studio 2 but you will still be recording and all the other facilities are available to you, all the labs are available to you from day one and that's just the way we run. And is there anything else I want to say there? Well, we use a wide variety of tools and we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll maybe talk about that in the Q&A. We'll, we'll, we'll address uh, so many of the tools that we use. But here's the really important part. All coursework is based around, uh, well, it, they're all based on projects, right? We're very project focused. There are no exams here. It's just not a particularly effective way to assess how you're doing. So we will maybe discuss a, a couple of production techniques or ways to produce uh, material and then you'll ultimately then uh, try to apply all of that with your own idea of course and that's how we assess you. So I've mentioned a lot of this already. Active learning one-to-one -one is really important for us. All your projects have a dedicated supervisor. We're all incredibly approachable. It's very easy to have a chat with us about whatever it might be. Um, we have extensive resources on campus and offline. The last two years has really allowed us to really build out the facilities that we have. And I hope you can see that from just the way that we're streaming from the studios today. Uh, we have a great library full with lots of material, books, eBooks, videos, lots of resources. Uh, and I, I mentioned earlier the industry focus, which is really, really important for us because we are always conscious that ultimately we're preparing you for a world in a couple of years and we take that responsibility very seriously. Already mentioned, we're based on the McGee campus, already mentioned the studios, we have two labs. We are largely based around Apple Mac. That's just the way we are. It, we're not against Windows or even Linux. We do use them to some extent, but the labs and the studios do run this way, um, at least for now. And then we also have a number of performance spaces where you can put on, let's say, for example, sound installation work or performance. And yeah. Some student feedback. I'll let you read that. I won't. Um, I won't interfere. So to summarize that, I, th I think it's nice that we, we definitely seem to be doing okay on the, the breadth and the explanation for that and the relevancy of all of these topics. One more. So again, the modules um, are helping you to cover a wide number of areas and we're doing well in terms of explanations. This is an underrated point, I think. Remember that coming to us is going to be a different experience. I mean, I know that's obvious, but what the really key parts to that is you're going to be around people who are deliberately focused and invested in this area of inquiry. So it's probably very much unlike any learning experience you've had previously, where we're, we're all really, really keen to explore the nature of a particular question. And the key part there being um, becoming a good problem solver, which is what we refer to as a life skill. You will use that again and again and again. So if we can help you to uh, develop those skills, that's really important. In terms of the student experience, there are a number of um, additional, let's call them channels, where you can explore your creativity and your interests. The big one being the MST Society, which is run by the students. Uh, they're going to be putting on their first gig. Uh, a lot of this had to stop while we were in, in, during the, the health crisis, 
but we're coming back out of that now and it, it's great to see and they'll be putting on their first gig in well, by the end of well possibly march february march and that's going to be great we'll be in a venue in the city collaborating with the music students and really looking forward to that and the subject supports them completely on that because it's really is a, a an important endeavor we also have a music society and an Irish traditional music society. Uh, we have a choir, which many MST students join. There's a jazz band, which again, many MST students will join. And then we, um, well, John, Brian, and another one of our lecturers, Johnny Delaney, run a, an event called Oscillations and Modulations. You can see the flyer for it over here, there on the right. Essentially bring together a bunch of creative minds all focused on the area of audio and music and seeing what they're doing. And then, of course, we have the Caltronic Festival, which is the largest electronic music festival on the island, and that takes place in the city in the summer. In terms of graduates, then, when we talk to employers, well, you can see it in front of you, the things that employers look for are also characteristics and traits that we encourage you to develop while you're learning um, the business of music, sound and technology. So we'll help you to explore all of that. And um, these are what we refer to as transferable skills. So they're applicable regardless of where you go. And this is an important point to make. So the ability to self-start is a huge one to manage projects. It's a huge part of it. And what we'll, is we'll help you do all of that uh, throughout the program, the ability to develop and communicate ideas, the problem solving part, which we appear to be doing okay on, according to our students, and then of course demonstrate a practical experience. If you think about it, with no exams from year one, you're constantly making things, and that is the best portfolio you can have. And you can go to an employer and say, hey, I made this, and this, and this. In terms of careers then, obviously sound design is a big one as I've mentioned, the area of film, documentaries, TV, games and advertising, all really, really strong areas, lots of opportunities there. Interactive audio applications, again, I would include games in that, but also uh, online and applications around that. We see that's um, improving all of the time and we increasingly things, even the humble browser is incre increasingly capable of um, supporting really convincing audio applications. Sound engineering and audio production, of course, so recording, production, post-production, all of that. We do get a number of students who are interested in performance, a number who are interested in technical roles, and quite a number who are interested in uh, exploring event management and going on to uh, think about performance and events and that type of thing. Um, and then, of course, if you want to stay in education, you can continue on to research. I've written something. It's on our website, musicsoundtechnology.com forward slash hashtag careers. And it's where I try to break down the question of careers in the creative industries, because it's not as straightforward as, for example, something like um, accountancy or law, which are very much um, clear pathways and clear trajectories in where you need and where you can go. In the creative industries, it's, it's much more flexible and I try to address that. So please do take a look at that. In relation to COVID-19, we are coming out of this. We are on campus and we are looking forward to safely returning more and more and increasing the levels of activity on campus because really for what we do it's it's just really really important in relation to entry requirements there will be a session later on today and there's a live chat function but also on our website which is this one musicsoundtechnology.com slash hashtag entry i list all of the entry requirements uh, if you want to take a quick look at that, and we'll keep that up to date. Uh, sorry, oh, I should have gone to the presentation, Greg. And 
yes, for uh, our international students, um, there will be live Q&A throughout the day. And now, if there are any questions, that's pretty much all we're going to talk about today. I really, really hope that was helpful and helped you to get a better sense of what it is that we do. Uh, while we're waiting for some questions, I'm just going to go back to John. John, I mentioned earlier that we use a variety of tools. Could you give us a, a summarized rundown of the ins and outs yeah, of that? It's, it's pretty extensive, to be honest, but maybe if we talk about individual spaces, um, I think there's uh, this focus that we have particularly on transferable skills, and we find that that's really quite an important thing. So whilst you know, one approach is to focus on a particular tool. What we'd rather do is teach technique that goes across various tech tools, right? So from the music production point of view, we utilize Ableton Live within our studio spaces. We also utilize Logic um, Pro, which is an Apple product for music production and recording. Um, so understanding one of those will help you with the other. So that's, that's an example where we have these kind of transferable skills. We also, within our lab, use one that you may or may not have heard of, which is called Traction Waveform. Um, that tends to be used a bit more in the first year because it gives a bit of an easier transition into um, some of the ways of working with those types of technologies that then you can progress to other systems and transfer across. Um, in the studio here, in, which is specific to this particular studio, we also have access to Pro Tools which is tends to be um, used across in industry for this type of work. But I think, um, you know, in years gone past, there used to be quite a lot of difference between these various systems. But certainly over the, the last few years, that, that has narrowed to the point where the best system is really the one that you know how to use. So um, that's, that's really a focus on the software side of things. Also, you know, going back to our lab spaces for a moment we use a range of tools that you might not expect so we have access to things like adobe um, which can include kind of graphical elements um, there are cases where you might want to have a bit of knowledge around those tools as well say for instance you're promoting a gig and you need to create a flyer we have access to those types of tools that would allow you to do that and um, there's also some audio focused elements within those applications as well, but also can extend into things like web design. So those types of digital tools could be helpful for the same types of examples where you want to promote a gig, having some of those tools available to create a website that would help you do that um, would be useful. Um, more on the kind of sound, sound design and synthesis side, then we, we run some software systems that um, emulate some of the, the machines that you can see behind Greg there, in particular, the modular modular synth just over his shoulder there. Um, so one of the software systems we use there is called VCV Rack, and that's something that you'll be exposed to in first year. Um, and it's just a, a digital recreation of an analog modular synth, if you can think of it that way. And that's really useful because not only is it um, a means by which we can explore synthesis itself, but it, it allows you to f more firmly understand how things are rooted, how signals are flowing through a system, for example. And that, of course, um, supports you really well when you get into an environment like a, a recording studio where you have multiple signals um, kind of going to and fro the various different systems that we're working with. Um, lastly, then, I suppose the other key one that I would mention in there is an application called Max. Um, and Max is a, a specific programming language, but it, it's um, not a programming language as you might imagine it. Um, in this particular system, we kind of connect pre-built objects together. And the idea being there that we generate new software systems to create audio, to process audio, but also to um, process video as well and generate video. So those types of tools are particularly um, useful, again, for the performance aspect. So if you're a traditional musician, you maybe don't have uh, those skills to put on a projection or said performance, that these types of systems will help you kind of round out that, um, that skill set. 
so those are those are um, some of the the aspects that maybe wouldn't be immediately obvious. So there's also visual aspects to some of the work that we do as well that support it. And often we're 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 working with both of these types of media at the same time um, in some of those cases. So I, I, I hope that answers some of the questions. At least, yeah, Greg, great. it's a long it's a long yeah, conversation. It, we could it is go it on. is. But I, I, as I you know. say, I think it's important to highlight because there's a lot more happening and. I, I really like the the way that we've embraced this sort of flexibility because even in in first year we like we we have some students who come in and they already know a particular system and we're talking about another system and we don't force people to move as long as they're still just exploring the same concepts they can use whatever tool they're they're comfortable with if if that's the case. Exactly. Yeah, I think um, the technique trumps the equipment really, and Absolutely. I think that's a, that that's a, something that we should focus on. You know, that should be a t-shirt technique. Tool. Yeah, we should get an MST T-shirt. But what, what is it? Technique trumps. Technique trumps the, the tool. The tool. The tool. Technique Tools. trumps the tool. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's it. Well, listen. I think that's a good place to end. Technique trumps the tool. So we're about fifty minutes, or we're a little bit over, but that's that's all good. I hope this was helpful, and for myself and John, thank you for your attention, and we'll hopefully see you all soon. Thank you.